Hey guys, I've had a lot of questions about the tiny house, what does it look like while I'm staying in it, and other questions like that, so I wanted to show everybody what it looks like now that I'm staying um, in the tiny house part-time, not full-time, but part-time, trying to prepare it for full-time living. I'm gonna go around the house and show you different parts of the house and basically talk about what worked, what didn't work, and what I had to change. I will start with the sitting area. The thing that I like the most about this space is that there's two doors. It's just practical. So I come in this one mostly. When I'm setting up the hookups on that side, I can pop out and do that. But then it's nice that once it's hooked up, I don't really have to walk over the hookups. I can go out the small door. And then this sitting area, I would not have been able to get this bench in here to work on it because it was much bigger before I started. I would not have been able to get it in here in the small door. I would have had to get it through the big door. If I didn't have the big door, this bench would not be here. I sit here and this board comes up, it slides out and it goes up top and I'll show you guys in a minute. It goes up top and becomes a table. The thing that didn't occur to me is that if I have that as the table, I no longer have a space to sit. In the back of my head I thought, oh well I'll get chairs, but then when it's in this formation I have to find storage for the chairs which I guess is underneath but it's not that pretty and they're, they would have to be folding chairs. I found this really cool table at the Cannery Row Antique Mall in Monterey. Um, it was pretty old, pretty beat up, it had been modified in a bunch of ways. It looked like it used to be a coffee table and then became a table and now it's gone back to being a bench. I will show you guys right now the solution I came up with to the eating area. I like to sit and maybe cross my legs or sprawl out while I'm eating so this enables that. it's kind of a pain in the butt to do. It only takes a minute and it's really comfortable to sit on this couch. It's actually a crib mattress which is the reason it doesn't really fit. Eventually we'll get a custom cushion. This was the cheap option and last night we had a lightning storm and I actually slept on the floor down here because I was really scared of watching the lightning come down from the sky to the ground over the tiny house in the skylight. So it's technically a guest bed. One thing I really love about the entryway is the copper pipe coat rack, which my mom gave me for Christmas, and I've had a lot of compliments on it. It's really well made. It's really beautiful, all of the hardware that they use. One thing on the entryway, oh, my dog's leaving. Bye, Diego, love ya. This screen door is in the way of me entering the door a lot of the time, and it means I can't close it and have a doormat there at the same time. So I would like to get rid of the screen door. Um, even though it's really nice for airflow, I just feel like I'm getting stuck as I walk through with the bag and the dogs. We've made some changes to the kitchen. Most of the changes have just been customizing storage. Personally, I really am glad that we don't have an oven because that would have been this space. And we have the dehumidifier there, but we can move the dehumidifier into the bathroom in the closet if we want. And it's nice to just have versatility of the space, especially since I'm always trying to fit this dog bed somewhere. Of course, TJ is taking the big bed and Diego's on the floor. We have a toaster. Um, you put it on the stove and put the pieces of bread on each side of it and just turn the stove on and it toasts things really nicely and it doesn't dry them out. And uh, we also use this as our coffee maker, which is a great addition. Jason got me this for Christmas. We use these shelves that Liz from Tumbleweed made. Uh, she's the cabinet maker there. We use these shelves a lot for the things that we use often because it's so convenient to take things in and out. Uh, we do put the stuff in a bin when we're driving so that they don't fall and break on the counter. This is all of the inner workings of the tiny house. I could customize this a lot, but we actually don't need any more kitchen storage right now, so I'm not that worried about it. This is our garbage can. It's a bucket. The washer dryer, we use it every two or three days, and if we didn't have it, we would be in trouble because we really need to do wash a lot, especially because of the dogs and because we're both so active. Uh, the sink, I have a little Tupperware container to hold all the things that usually sit along the sink because I like to wipe around the sink. And I made this rack and I'm gonna cover this on my blog. The left side has four magnets. Currently I'm only using two of the spaces, but it does have four. Um, my mom had this great idea of using carabiners. I was just gonna use hooks, but instead I used the loop hooks and then I used carabiners to hang these. And there's actually a bag that goes around them so they can stay while we move. And we take the knife and the spatula and just put them in the sink. The fridge is large. So big freezer. Big fridge. No, it's not for a family of 10, but it's certainly for a family of two or four. A lot of people ask me about food storage when I give tours. Um, so we have a bin that is our pantry and we have all of our stuff in here. Uh, it's just dry goods. We have such a large fridge. We really don't need that much storage space, but it does have pasta and rice and things like that. And we also have a rice maker in one of the drawers in the stairs. 
Jason got that for me for Christmas. And then we have our tiny house uh, paperwork. And this is the dog food bin. The dogs get as much food storage space almost as we do. You take up a lot of space? The bathroom I haven't made a lot of changes to. I have my shower curtain up here, which I cut at the bottom so it doesn't mildew. I keep more cleaning supplies in this closet and just toilet paper up there. I keep it in a bag to make it sort of look neat. I have my Clorox mop and the dust buster and then the peat moss and the vinegar and the water spray for the composting toilet. I would not recommend a Swiffer for a tiny house, let alone any home, because the Swiffer handle doesn't have a 360 degree turn. So in order to clean the corners of a house, you have to levitate against the wall above the mop in order to get the corners. Um, the Clorox mop and the Liebman both have a 360 degree turn angle. Also the refillable containers and they also have the reusable washable pads. It's really a waste to just be throwing out the containers and the pads each time and it's also really expensive. My composting toilet, I actually think there might be some peat moss in there right now. Um, I have a garbage can and I got this uh, during the storm in Monterey. It was really crazy storm. It brought up a lot of driftwood. I decided not to have curtains in the bathroom. I decided to use our towels as the curtains because that's what I was doing anyways. I copied Jenna from a Tiny House Giant Journey and I did the floor flanges with copper piping for my curtain rod. My mom also got me hooks for in the bathroom. There's two of them, one for my bathrobe and one for Jason. I'm gonna show you the loft now. I'm gonna just go up here. This is a beautiful rug that I got from Delreen. She made this by hand. It is cut wool and she wove it herself. I think this is just the sweetest gift and we really love it. I originally wanted to have it downstairs but it's so soft and so cushiony that I wanted to have it here because I actually walk oh, I almost just fell I walk on my knees across this space um, and it's really nice to have some cushioning on my knees we have a mattress now it's a queen size bed it really is big enough um, even though I sleep in a starfish position Jason puts up with me anyway there's my sloth his name is Tom Francis the final thing I want to talk about is moisture in the tiny house I have realized how humid it gets in here and that can cause mold and mildew and it can cause the wood to swell excessively which can damage the tiny house we have the bathroom fan, hood fan, the ceiling fan, and then the AC fan. The AC fan we don't run when we're on 30 amp, we only run it when we're on 50 amp, but we do use the fan all the time, and it's one of the fans that can blow up or down. In the winter you want it blowing up, and in the summer you want it blowing down. Tumbleweed thought of that, that was a great idea. We need that definitely. And also when it's blowing up, it actually blows air into the loft, which is nice. And that gives great airflow, but it's still too humid. So we actually got a dehumidifier, and it's 70 pints a day, and it really does fill up in a day. So that just goes to show how much moisture is in such a small space. 